Hey guys, Harvey Cthulhu here, asking you to please consider subscribing to this channel. Doomcock is fighting a war to save pop culture, and he would really appreciate your subscription. Also, click the notification bell, and uh, give a like to the video if you like it. And uh, if you could consider pushing the button and allowing me to escape my containment field and destroy the universe, uh, I would really appreciate it. All right. On to the video. Greetings, my friends. I am Dictor Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth, and I am here today with glad tidings, my friends. We are definitely winning the war on Woke. There has been plenty of evidence of this trend towards rejecting the insertion of aggressively woke politics into our entertainment over the last eight months, with non-woke projects like Cobra Kai, Peacemaker, Spider-Man No Way Home, Ghostbusters Afterlife, Suicide Squad, Dune, and the Snyder Cut succeeding brilliantly, while woke crap like The Eternals and The 355, an all-female spy movie featuring women beating and humiliating stupid evil men, died the death of a thousand sucks at the box office. Get Woke, Go Broke has never been more obviously true as Spider-Man No Way Home shattered post-COVID box office records and Steven Spielberg's woke version of West Side Story, complete with his refusal to subtitle Spanish dialogue because that played into the notion of English being the dominant language in the U.S., which it is, justly rolled over and gave up the ghost faster than a roach in a baking soda factory. This much is clear to everyone in this community, and it's becoming clear to everyone in Hollywood who pays attention to box office receipts, but recently, a story broke that reflects this trend in the larger world. To truly assess if any movement is gaining momentum or is on its last legs and dying out, you have to look at what's happening not simply with Hollywood, not simply with movie fans, but with the normies out there in the everyday world. Free-range normies are the last to react to issues like cultural vandalism and the tyranny of wokeness, but boy, when even the normies start to notice a trend and weigh in on it, that's when things really start to change. We can talk about wokeness and STD and Star Wars until the woke cows come home, but when we see signs that normies are waking up and rejecting wokeness in the larger society, that's when we know for sure that we're winning not individual battles, but the war itself. Well, my friends, today I bring you news from the land of the normies that will lift your spirits. This channel focuses mostly on pop culture issues, but a story recently broke in the mainstream media that I believe is significant to our mission to save pop culture, and so I'm going to discuss it with you today. As hard as it is to believe, the very bleeding heart of wokeness, San Francisco itself, rose up last week and for the first time strongly rejected wokeness. That's right, my friends, wokeness finally became too much for even San Francisco to stomach. And if that bastion of extremism finally got pushed past its breaking point by identity politics, can the rest of the country be far behind? To give you a little background on what happened in San Francisco and what it means, in the Atlantic's recent article titled The Meaning of San Francisco's School Board Recall, writer Gary Camilla writes, quote, By large margins, San Francisco voters on Tuesday recalled three members of the city school board, including board president Gabriela Lopez, with about 74% supporting recall, Allison Collins, 78%, and Fauga Moliga, 71%. The recall effort was directed at the entire board. These three were targeted because they were the only members who had served long enough to be eligible for recall. It was the city's first recall election since 1983, and the first successful one anyone can remember. San Francisco's recall campaign drew national attention because it was seen as a trial of radicalized left-wing politics. What does it mean that voters in one of the most liberal cities in the country decisively repudiated a board that last academic year marched proudly under the banner of racial equity and social justice while making no effort to open its schools? At a minimum, 
The recall demonstrates that woke racial politics have their limits, even in one of the wokest cities in the country." Unquote. The situation on the ground here was complicated. This was a school board that felt very smug and very comfortable with the usual virtue signaling bullshit that these woke wankers love to hide behind. These people felt empowered to do anything they wanted, so long as they had that woke shield to protect them, so long as they said the right woke things and hit the same old tired woke posturing. The article continues, quote, The San Francisco School Board had been flaunting its symbolic racial politics, albeit in singularly inane ways, well before the George Floyd protests made such gestures common across the country. In June 2019, it voted to conceal WPA-era murals in the city's George Washington High School because they were supposedly racially insensitive. Starting in 2018, it began searching for city public schools with objectionable names, a lengthy and historically illiterate process that culminated in January 2021 when it announced plans to rename 44 schools, including ones named after such retrograde figures as Abraham Lincoln and John Muir." Unquote. This kind of phony woke posturing did not go over well at all in the light of the fact that, like so many woke wankers in the world, the school board had a big mouth, loved the smell of their own woke farts, but didn't actually do their jobs. While the school board was happily trying to cancel white historical figures like Abraham Lincoln, schools in San Francisco remained closed and turns out even in San Francisco, the school board is expected to educate kids in schools. Hence the label school board, as opposed to woke board or asshole board, which they have been called from time to time, I'm sure, somewhere. It's all very well to posture and virtue signal and pat yourself on the back for being the bestest school board ever. But when you're so busy pursuing your woke agenda that you don't actually do your job, that, as it turns out, is a huge problem, even in San Francisco. As the New York Times put it in their article, San Francisco voters recall three Board of Education members, quote, the recall was a victory for parents who were angered that the district spent time deciding whether to rename a third of its schools last year instead of focusing on reopening them. It also appeared to be a demonstration of Asian American electoral power, a galvanizing moment for Chinese American voters in particular, who turned out in unusually large numbers for the election. In echoes of debates in other cities, many Chinese American voters were incensed when the school board introduced a lottery admission system for Lowell High School, the district's most prestigious institution, abolishing requirements primarily based on grades and test scores. A judge last year ruled that the board had violated procedures in making the change. The voters of the city have delivered a clear message, Ms. Breed, who supported the recall, said in a statement on Tuesday night. Unquote. The thing about Lowell High School is, admission to this institution was strictly merit-based, and students accepted there were the cream of the crop in terms of grades and test scores, actual tangible metrics, actual tangible achievements. The student body was largely white and Asian, and when this woke school board decided it was going to eliminate the merit-based admission system that is fair to all, the school board wanted to force diversity unjustly on Lowell High School by changing admissions to a lottery system so that anyone can come regardless of their merit. There's nothing woke wankers hate more than the idea of merit. They view merit, achievement, and superior work ethics as inherently racist. Yes, they're that delusional. This switch in priorities outraged the Asian community in San Francisco because it's all well and good to virtue signal wokeness when it's theoretical. But the minute push comes to shove and wokeness comes to take something away from you or away from your kids, that's when wokeness becomes too much for the general public. And that's where we are, people. If wokeness is too much for San Francisco, how long before it's too much for the rest of the U.S.? This shift in attitude is perhaps small in scope, but huge in significance. It's a canary in the woke coal mine, my friends. Wokeness is already on shaky ground in Hollywood, 
as more and more projects ignore wokeness and succeed wildly as a result. But let me tell you, the moment the pendulum swings, wokeness becomes widely recognized as the repellent propaganda it is, and the public rejects it just as San Francisco did, the whole woke house of cards will collapse. <laughs> Rest assured, we are winning, my friends. San Francisco, of all places, has shown us it's only a matter of time. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay hopeful and stay angry. Ha 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 